Good morning. Welcome to the King's Report for August 9th, 2017, eighth year of Chungi, uh, the uh, sixth month and 18th day by the Heavenly Calendar. I'm Tim Elder, uh, and um, Greg Knoll is uh, with me here, um, small businessman, and uh, no, not small businessman, you're, you're rather large. <laughs> I'm 6'2". <six> yes, you're 6'2". And entrepreneur. Uh, he owns small businesses. I don't know how small they are. Are they? Uh, anyways, businessman and entrepreneur, and uh, we are here uh, representing the uh, second king of uh, Chonyuk, uh, Hyung Jin. Uh, let me start with the weather this morning, as usual. Uh, there's a light fog in the Chonyuk area um, this morning at 52 degrees. Uh, we're expecting a high of 83. Uh, the um, as we mentioned yesterday, the uh, eastern two thirds of the United States is going through a kind of an August chill. They say that's what they're calling it, and actually eighty three is about uh, normal for this time of year for here. But the for the nighttime temperature is uh, fifty two, fifty. I think it got down to fifty before the sun came up this morning, and that was um, uh, pretty cool uh, for uh, this area Great for this time of weather. year. Great sleeping weather. Yes, <laughs> difficult to get up in the morning. It's, uh, such good sleeping <laughs> weather. Um, uh, and, uh, and then tomorrow will be uh, uh, tonight will be a low of 57, and a high tomorrow, mostly sunny and uh, uh, pleasant tomorrow and today too. 84 t- today, uh, uh, tomorrow 83 today. So we're having some uh, rather uh, nice weather right now. I think there's going to be a little bit of rain, uh, thunderstorms and rain later on the week, uh, Friday and uh, Saturday. Uh, but uh, for, for now, it's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, weather that we're having. I'm going to go to my Rima this morning. I'm in Second uh, Kings <clears throat> this morning, and uh, reading, be reading the first, uh, uh, first seven verses of chapter 25, the uh, last chapter in the Second Kings. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his host, against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about. And the king went the way uh, toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. So God's judgment uh, was passed on uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, through uh, Babylon. Uh, God uh, uh, used uh, Babylon uh, to uh, uh, pass judgment on uh, Jerusalem uh, because uh, Jerusalem had uh, strayed from uh, God's way. And especially we see here that the um, when things got tough, a lot of people got going. <laughs> they ran away. <laughs> they, ran, they fled by night. <clears throat> And the king went the way towards the plain. So the king also, <laughs> I'm out of here. And, but the, he got caught, and um, and he, they, the the Babylonians uh, uh, killed his sons before his eyes, and bound him with fetters of brass. Uh, they killed his sons before his eyes, and they put out his eyes after that, mm-hmm. and they ba- bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. So a very ignominious uh, end. Uh, to uh, King Zedekiah there, uh, and it shows the what happens uh, uh, when uh, people go against uh, God's providence, when the chosen people go against pro- God's providence. Uh, being the um, uh, chosen people is not some kind of um, privilege that you go around boasting about. Uh, it carries with it huge uh, responsibility uh, because um, uh, you're supposed to be the center of God's uh, salvation providence in the world. And if you don't fulfill that providence, then um, a lot of judgment comes upon. Mm. So I think that's certainly true today with um, blessed central families worldwide, uh, where Father really suffered and um, uh, shed tremendous blood uh, for the sake of a blessed central families. And now look what's happened. Before we get too far, let me uh, talk about uh, where Father talks about the blessed central families. 
this is in the um, uh, Chun Sung Gyeong. I'm on page uh, 2146. Uh, we're in the book on um, restoration of uh, true God's homeland, book 13. And this is chapter 6 of that book. Um, uh, the unification, this is a uh, one paragraph in a, in a longer speech. <clears throat> the Unification Church, having the true parents, is marrying people of the world from a parental position. Not only are racial differences transcended, but even saints and sinners are being blessed uh, in marriage uh, with each other. Now, the Korean actually says um, uh, good people and evil people. Here in the English it says saints and sinners, but the, the Korean, it, uh, uh, the actual, what it actually says is good people and evil people. Saint, anyway, it says saints and sinners are being blessed in marriage with each other. In other words, good and evil people are being blessed uh, with each other. Through denying evil love, overcoming evil life, and engrafting evil lineage, the true parents do not cast out Cain, who murdered Abel, but instead bless him in the same position with everyone else. Just as there is a point during the changing of the tides, when ebb, ebb and flow are in, are in equilibrium, there is a similar turning point in the providence of salvation and the balance between good and evil. Through the joint blessing of good and evil people, Satan is driven out completely. Mm. That's a very interesting uh, passage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Most religions that I can think of, you know, they, we only want good people. We only want saints. <laughs> And if someone is evil, if someone does something evil, they are kind of excluded from the congregation. Mm. You know, they are excommunicated. They are thrown out. Um, like, for example, in the Family Federation right now, especially in Japan, where if someone in the Family Federation goes to the Sanctuary Church, even goes to the Sanctuary Church or gives a donation to the Sanctuary Church, then a letter goes out to all the Family Federation people in that area saying, this person is uh, no longer um, a, a member of our community. You must have no communication uh, with this person. And if this person contacts you, you must immediately report it to your pastor. And otherwise, you too, will be ca you, you too will be excluded. This kind of a uh, thing is happening in the Family Federation in, in Japan. Mm. Because uh, they only want good people, you know. They don't want the sinners who go to sanctuary church. Uh, but that's not Father's way. The Father's way is to have good people and evil people, mm. and actually to even bless them together. Mm. And he says that is the way uh, by, uh, by by God blesses Cain just as He blesses Abel, and that's the way to uh, to uh, get rid of uh, Satan completely. So the enemy is not the evil people. The enemy is Satan. Uh, that's, that's very. Uh, interesting to me. You know, <clears throat> many people have uh, wondered, you know, when I first joined the church, I wrote a letter to my parents that I kind of maybe regret now. I said, you know, in the uh, Unification Church hierarchy, the higher you go, the more saintly the people are. And, uh, and this proves, I said, this proves that uh, Reverend Moon is the Messiah. Well, now I see that that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't necessarily so. <laughs> There's some pretty evil people. <laughs> oh wow! When I was in Korea, um, I got I had a, 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 a conflict with one um, um, senior Korean leader whose name um, maybe he's not so well known in in America. Although he was a regional leader here for a while in America, uh, but I got into conflict with him, and um, he suddenly turned into a, a, a gangster in the way that he was talking to me. He started talking to me just like a gangster. Wow, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was like Tony Soprano. Really, it was incredible. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he was threatening me. Uh, and he said, yeah. So, the, yeah, there are evil people. There are people who steal money. There are, a lot of money was stolen. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. A lot of people have become rich uh, from being uh, leaders in the, in the Unification Church, personally rich, and their families are rich. Uh, and... Uh, uh, these are evil people. They, they've they've taken public funds. You know how how much a father warned us uh, about the pub, uh, personal use of public funds. Um, but so many people have who who see this <clears throat> and who are aware of this um, struggle over it. Why does father have evil people around him? You know, other 
religious leaders, they only want good people around them, right? But they have evil people. But he has evil people around them. And Jesus, too, if you think about it, mm-hmm. Judas. Jesus, uh, I'm sure, knew what Ju- Judas was doing. That he, collectors, harlots. Right. Yeah. And, you know, uh, but especially with Judas. Mm-hmm. You know, Ju- Judas was going to betray him. Mm-hmm. And even at the Last Supper, Jesus even said, this man's going to, re- mm-hmm. going to betray me. Yeah. But he didn't say, this man's going to betray me, so I want the other 11 of you to, to beat the H out of him. Uh, I want you to kill him right now so he doesn't betray me so I don't have to go the way of the cross. That's not what he said. Mm-hmm. You know, he, but he, he, uh, he, he, he named, basically didn't ac- actually call out Judas' name, but, uh, but said it in a way that everyone understood um, that uh, this guy's going to betray me. You know, so, uh, so that means that Judas, Jesus, uh, even up until then, knew that uh, uh, Judas was going to do this. So why did he keep Judas uh, around him? So one explanation that I've heard, um, one person expressed to me was that, well, uh, Father and Jesus as well, uh, the Messiah uh, comes with the mission to um, love the unlovable and forgive the unforgivable. And so he keeps uh, uh, satanic people around him uh, so that he can love them and fulfill his mission. Okay, that's one explanation I've heard. That makes a lot of sense. Um, What do you think? Yeah, I think Father as the Messiah, as the Christ, has to show the pathway mm-hmm. of redemption for all human beings, mm-hmm. uh, from the lowest dredges of society to, mm-hmm. the, to the saintly. And uh, I think we have the same mission here at Sanctuary. You know, mm-hmm. our, our congregation, our group should be open and uh, have the attitude that all are welcome to come and feast upon the Word on <clears throat> Sundays, and we should have an open-door policy, and uh, we should not think of ourselves too highly. <laughs> well, let me ask you, know? you this. Uh, speaking of not thinking of ourselves too highly, let me ask you this. God, uh, Father kept evil people around him so that he could love him. Mm-hmm. Greg, you and I are close to the second king. So are we evil people? I think there's probably elements <laughs> of evil within us. <laughs> You know, are we are we close to the second king so that we can receive God's love? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody we, described we, it like this. To are me we once. the unlovable? Are we the unforgivable? <laughs> Somebody described it to me one time, and I I think about this uh, all the time. Is like comparing good and evil within human beings mm-hmm. is like comparing anthills from an airplane. Yes, yes. For God, like, yes. We're all evil. The second king has pointed this out countless numbers of times. We're yes. all dirty rags yes. in front of God. Yes. So really to compare <clears throat> our saintliness compared to others is folly and yes. a joke uh, from God's point of view. So uh, when I um, went to Korea um, early on, um, I had a conversation with a, a very senior member uh, of our church. And this woman uh, told me that um, she that she had had a conversation with Father uh, way back when, and she said, Father said that actually saving all humanity is, is not so difficult. Father said, all you have to do is take the the most saintly person in the world and the most evil person in the world, and if you lift up these two people, then everyone else is connected, so they will all all follow, mm-hmm. and everyone will be raised up. <laughs> So, okay, I thought, you know, I have some idea of who the most saintly person in the world might be. But I was curious, who's the most evil person in the world? Is it Kim Il-sung, you know, because at that time Kim Il-sung was still alive? Who is it? So I asked her, you know, so who's the most evil person in the world that, that, that Father is lifting, lifting up? And she said, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> she was a very uh, humble person, although at that moment anyway, she was a very humble person. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she's not in sanctuary now. Um, yeah, but I think each of us has to consider that uh, I am that uh, most evil person that uh, that Father is uh, pulling up. Uh, I don't know. I guess, uh, where are we on that? On that <laughs> anyway, uh, we can assume that uh, that we always need to repent, and as you said, uh, that uh, our works are all like dirty rags in, in the eyes of God, as it says in the uh, New Testament. Certainly, uh, the safest path is always repentance. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Keep a humble position before yes, heaven. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is our, our Rima uh, for this morning. Uh, so let's. Uh, I hope that uh, gives you some insight as well. Let's uh, I'll take a break now and come back, and we'll start going through the news uh, from a, a Tony group perspective. See you in a minute. Magnum.
Crime Research and Auto Ordnance, the Car Firearms Group, with a diverse product line that blends American craftsmanship with cutting edge technology. It's no secret why gun enthusiasts choose Car Firearms Group. From the Desert Eagle and Baby Desert Eagle made famous by Hollywood, the history of the 1911 and the Tommy gun, to the best in compact concealed carry. Car Firearms Group is not only the first name in personal defense, it's a name that has earned the respect of gun enthusiasts around the world. Concealment, innovative technology, value, accuracy, and history. Car Firearms Group, made in the USA. Visit car.com today. Welcome back to the King's Report for uh, Wednesday, August 9th, uh, 2017. It's the 8th year of Chungi and the 6th month and 18th day by the Heavenly Calendar. Before we get into more serious stuff, or maybe this is serious, where in Philadelphia, soda is more expensive than beer. Uh, <laughs> I do not drink either one. Uh, so maybe for me it's not so serious, but for, for people it's serious. But also, this is serious because it shows the... Um, shows how people misunderstand the role of government. This is a kind of a mommy state situation. So let's go through this. Uh, in that sense, this is very serious. You know, in Philadelphia, you know, is the largest city in Pennsylvania, not its capital, but its largest city. And uh, uh, when we have statewide elections here, Philadelphia, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh really mess things up. You know, the Democrats are really strong there, and so they really, really are messing things up. So anyway, <clears throat> let's see what is happening in the People's Republic of Philadelphia. Philadelphia's tax on sugary drinks has made soda more expensive than beer in the city. You said you already heard this before. Was it on the yeah. radio when you came in? No, I think I read it on Drudge. Oh, you did? Oh, you yeah. read it on Drudge? I think okay. yesterday. Oh, read right, yesterday? Yeah. Well, I just noticed it this morning. The Tax Foundation released a new study on the excise tax last week, finding that the 1.5% per ounce tax has fallen short of revenue projections, cost jobs, and has forced some Philadelphians to drive outside the city to buy groceries. Of course, you know, I mean, people aren't stupid. They have cars. Uh, the study finds that the tax is 24 times higher than the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania tax rate on beer. 24 times higher tax on soda as on wow. beer. Uh, purchases of beer are also now less expensive than non-alcoholic non beverages subject to the tax in the city, according to the study written by Count, uh, Courtney Schubert and Scott Drinkert. Empirical evidence from a 2012 journal article uh, suggests that soda taxes can push consumers to alcohol, meaning it is likely, that the, likely the case that consumers are switching to alcoholic <laughs> beverages as a result of the tax. <laughs> the paper aptly titled, From Coke to Coors, <laughs> <laughs> further shows that switching from soda to beer increases total caloric intake, even as soda taxes are generally aimed at caloric reduction. Yeah. You've heard of beer belly, but I never heard of uh, Coke belly. Coke belly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the solution is easy. Just raise the taxes on beer. <laughs> <laughs> the Tax Foundation points out that unlike most cities, Philadelphia passed the tax specifically to raise revenue, not to fight obesity. <laughs> <laughs> the, city, the city even includes diet sodas in its tax as a way to raise money for pre-kindergarten programs. However, less than half of the $39.4 million collected since the tax went in, uh, into effect on January 1 has gone to, educating fund, to education, education funding. The tax was originally promoted as a vehicle to raise funds for pre-kindergarten education, but in practice it awards just 49% of the soda tax revenues to local pre pre-K programs, Schubert and Junkard Wright. Another 20% of the soda tax revenues fund government employee benefits <laughs> <laughs> or city programs, while the rest of the money will go towards parks, libraries, and community schools. 
Collections from soda tax are also well below original projections of $92 million per year due to tax avoidance. Soda sales in Philadelphia have also declined since the tax went into effect at the beginning of 2017, threatening the long-run sustainability of the tax, Schubert and Drunkard write. According to some local distributors and retailers, sales have declined by nearly 50%. This is likely primarily due to higher prices which discourage, discourage purchasing beverages in the city. Uh, earlier this year, PepsiCo announced it was laying off up to 100 workers because of the tax, which the company blames for costing a 43% drop in business. Philadelphians are also no longer able to buy 12 packs or 2 liters of Pepsi products in grocery stores due to the tax, the Tax Foundation said. From an operational standpoint, the tax rollout continues to create problems for the city as collections have come in less than projected, the Tax Foundation said. Uh, in July, city officials lowered beverage tax revenues projections by 14%, leaving the pre-kindergarten programs that the tax promised to fund in jeopardy. Furthermore, tax, uh, soda taxes are regressive, hurting low-income earners the most. Philadelphia's experience uh, serves as a cautionary tale for other areas weighing similar beverage taxes, the group said. I guess it's, what is shocking is that the politicians didn't see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> they were banking on the sugar addiction that people would pay any amount of money for a can of soda. Right, you just drive outside the city. Right, right. It's I mean, about a 10 minute drive to get to the suburbs. I would imagine, yeah. I mean, uh, And you buy uh, liter after liter and liter after Coke of Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, you know, they set up barriers at the city limits <laughs> and check people for. Uh, That's next. Yeah, yeah for, for contraband yeah. Pepsi-Cola, <laughs> not purchased in the city. Uh, uh, but this is really um, a, a ridiculous uh, situation. That's Government gone bad. In, uh, it just, well, it's, a, it's a symptom, though. It's a symptom of a mm -hmm. much larger problem uh, where you know, they say, okay, well, we, let's just tax uh, um, sugary drinks. And they say it wasn't to fight obesity. But, of course, in other cities, it is being used as a way to fight obesity. And uh, I just wonder uh, how much obesity has – it's part of the war on obesity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, obes obesity is winning. Uh, I just wonder how much of people's weight has gone down. Probably not at all. And, and it says here that actually people are turning to, to alcohol, which actually uh, increases their caloric intake. Yep. And so people's uh, uh, weight will go up. You uh, decrease your sugar, but your calories go up. Yes, calories go up. Uh, I mean, amazing. sugar Sugar is a real uh, silent killer. Mm -hmm. It is certainly the main cause of diabetes mm -hmm. and heart disease is mm -hmm. related to sugar intake. Strokes mm -hmm. are related to sugar intake. Mm -hmm. So sugar, refined sugar is certainly a, a, a death wish on humanity. Mm -hmm. So, but is, is, ra is tar raising taxes the, the real solution mm -hmm. to solving the problem? Well, you know, the um, percentage of people smoking cigarettes has gone down so over the last 50 years. Is that because of a tax or because of education? Right. So I think it's because of education. I think so, too. Yeah. And education can be done by who? Does it have to be done by government? I think it's more effectively done by, by pr in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And families. And families, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the Internet has certainly uh, helped in that area where people uh, mm -hmm. have access to information. Mm -hmm. uh, but the... Uh, yeah, the bo the bottom line is that uh, people, it's not cool to smoke anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if there's alternatives, <clears throat> uh, fortunately there are a lot of alternative be beverages out there mm -hmm. where people can drink uh, beverages that are mm -hmm. not laden with sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, the most deadly combination is sugar and caffeine. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really causing a problem mm -hmm. among uh, the youth. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think that, and also the un underlying story here is that they did not do it to fight obesity. They mm. did it to raise revenue. Which is, makes it even more foolish. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, they should have seen that you know, people would just drive outside the city uh, or that people would switch to beer. <laughs> Especially this is Philadelphia, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a very blue-collar city. Right. Uh, I can see how uh, beer consumption would, would go up there. Um, this is the city of the... Uh, 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 cheesesteak. Uh, <clears throat> brotherly love. Beer helps uh, in the area of brotherly love, I guess. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think so. It actually, when you get drunk, uh, when not when you get drunk, but when people in general get drunk, uh, there's more possibility <laughs> more for violence. conflict and more yeah. violence, yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, 
All right, let's get to some more um, life and death stuff. All that, uh, you know, this is that was also life and death, but this is more immediate life and death, <laughs> imminent life and death, uh, where uh, the North Korea situation is really getting out of hand. Uh, Reuters article out of Seoul, North Korea said on Wednesday, it is carefully examining plans for a missile strike on the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam. Just hours after U.S. President Donald Trump told the North that any threat to the United States would be met with fire and fury. Uh, no longer shock and awe, but now fire and fury. And North Korea has made no secret of plans to develop a nuclear tip missile able to strike the United States and has ignored international calls to halt its nuclear and missile programs. The strike plan would be uh, put into practice at any moment once leader Kim Jong-un makes a decision, a spokesman for the Korean People's Army said in a statement carried by the North's uh, state-run KCNA news agency. The KPA strategic force is now carefully examining the operational plan for making an enveloping fire at the areas around Guam with medium to long-range missile um, strategic ballistic rocket Hwasong-12 in order to contain the U.S. major military bases in Guam, including the Anderson Air Force Base, the spokesman said. The plan would be, re the plan would be reported to the North's Supreme Command soon, the spokesman said, without citing a date. Uh, on Monday, two uh, U.S. B-1 bombers uh, flew from Guam over the Korean Peninsula as a part of its continuous bomber presence, a U.S. official said, in a sign of the strategic importance, of, uh, importance Guam holds. In another statement citing a different military spokesman, North Korea also accused the United States of devising a preventative war, preventive war and said any plans to execute this would be met with an all-out war wiping out all the strongholds of enemies, including the U.S. mainland. The United States uh, should stop its reckless military provocation against North Korea to avoid any military action, the Army spokesman said. The U.N. Security Council unanimously imposed new sanctions on North Korea on Saturday over its continued missile tests. Trump ratcheted up the rhetoric against North Korea on Tuesday, saying Pyongyang should not make any more threats against the United States in the meeting with reporters at the Trump National Golf Course in Bedminster, New Jersey. Uh, so North Korea now is uh, specifically um, talking about uh, attacking Guam with its, uh, with its missiles. Uh, Russia, on the other hand, <clears throat> is saying, uh, um, let's all take a deep breath, basically, that's what they're saying. <clears throat> Russia downplays North Korea uh, saber rattling and tells the U.S. to be prudent. Uh, this is in the Washington Examiner. Um, Russia's top diplomat downplayed North Korea's nuclear saber rattling um, following a diplomatic summit Tuesday and said the United States has to take, quote, prudent, unquote, steps to de-escalate de the crisis. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasized that North Korea always complains about sanctions imposed by the United Nations Security Council. The regime threatened a physical response to the new sanctions and warned South Korea it has the ability to turn Seoul into a sea of, a sea of flame, but Lavrov betrayed a little alarm. A quote, strictly speaking, this is how representatives of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea have reacted to all previous UN Security Council resolutions, unquote, he told reporters Tuesday, following an East Asia diplomatic summit in the Philippines. We will, uh, we will judge by their uh, actions, he said. Lavrov's response was consistent uh, with the ambivalent rhetoric from Russian and Chinese representatives at the UN Security Council after both countries uh, supported a U.S.-drafted resolution imposing new sanctions on North Korea. Despite that apparent agreement, they faulted the United States for conducting, the, conducting military exercises with South Korea and deploying a new missile defense system to the region. A quote, all must understand that progress towards denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula will be difficult so long as the North Korean regime perceives a direct threat to its own security, unquote, Vasily Nebenzia, Russian ambassador to the UN, told the Council Saturday. Quote, from that, for that is how the North Koreans view the military buildup in the region, which takes on the form of frequent, wide-ranging exercises and maneuvers of the U.S. and allies as they deploy strategic bombers, naval forces, and aircraft carriers, unquote. North Korea's top diplomat used those talking points in response 
uh, to the new sanctions and said that possession of nuclear weapons and intercontinental ballistic missiles is a legitimate option for self-defense in the face of a clear and real nuclear threat posed by the U.S., uh, unquote, according to CN, CNN. Uh, Lavrov reiterated Russia's desire for the United States to start direct talks with the North Koreans and other countries in the region. Quote, we, have confident, we are confident that uh, there is no alternative to the resumption of the political process, in, particularly, in particular the six-party talks, he said Tuesday. Six-party talks. <laughs> <clears throat> we will certainly continue our dialogue with our North Korean neighbors. We expect that, the, uh, that with the prudent approach all, of all players, naturally, including the United States, the Republic of Korea, and Japan, we'll be able to find a solution that suits all parties. Six-party talks were uh, talks that began during the Clinton uh, presidency uh, that involved uh, North and South Korea plus the four surrounding uh, powers, uh, U.S., Japan, uh, Soviet, uh, Russia, Russia, and uh, China. And North Korea used those talks to uh, buy time to create more uh, nuclear weapons, <laughs> nuclear warheads. And now Russia is calling for more six-party talks? It ain't going to happen. Uh, President Trump's uh, team, and I guess the reason they want that is because the six-party talks really brought the Russians back into the uh, Korean Peninsula now, after the fall of the Soviet, of Soviet Union. Um, their, of course, relations with North Korea uh, were basically pretty much broken. Uh, but the six-party talks sort of enabled the Russians to um, exercise influence over the Korean Peninsula again. And um, now they're sort of a uh, acting as uh, North Korea's uh, new best friend, in a sense, where China, if China uh, refuses imports or exports from North Korea to and from North Korea, then Russia steps in. And Russia sells them, uh, for example, aircraft fuel and gasoline and stuff like that. Um, so we don't, uh, President Trump's uh, team wants to use sanctions to force North Korea to negotiate an elimination of their nuclear program. And that ain't going to happen either. Um, we don't think having a dialogue where the North Koreans come to the table assuming that they're going to maintain their nuclear weapons is productive, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson told reporters last week. We would like to sit and have a dialogue with them about the future that will give them the security they seek and the future economic prosperity for North Korea, but that will then promote the economic prosperity throughout uh, North, Northeast Asia. So what is the... Uh, the future that will give them the security they seek. What, what kind of a future is that? It would be a future, I suppose, where um, one you know, option would be, the U.S. says, okay, uh, we'll pull out, and you can have it all. You can have the entire uh, Korean Peninsula. And uh, we'll also pull out of Japan, and uh, China can take over the entire area. And then, yeah, the North Korea will have the security it seeks. Other than that, I can't imagine what kind of a future there would be where North Korea could have the security that it seeks. Um, so is this what Rex Tillerson is talking about? That's what Kissinger was talking about. He was talking about uh, giving a deal to the North Koreans that says, okay, yeah, you get rid of your nuclear weapons and we'll pull out of South Korea. This is what Kissinger was talking about, the mm -hmm. man who gave Vietnam to the communists. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that that's that seems to be uh, gradually rising um, where the alternative to war is to say, okay, let's just, let's just um, let them have what they want. Which mm. never turns out well never in turns dealing out well. with a bully. Yeah. Um, they only want more power, more control. Yeah. It seems like there is no really good solution other than a use of force. Well, North Korea's definition of uh, they, North Korea talks about the U.S. nuclear threat, and um, someone might say, "Well, wait a second. There are no U.S. nuclear weapons now uh, on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, there used to be, but they were um, pretty much they were all pulled out." But the North Koreans count the, um, of course, the threat from Guam, but also U.S. has a nuclear weapons station in the United States that are capable of, uh, you know, hitting North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, they used to be aimed at the uh, Soviet Union or China. Maybe they're still, I guess they still are aimed at those places. But uh, one or two of them could be, uh, you know, redirected towards uh, Pyongyang. No problem with that. And so North Korea. That's why North Korea talks about uh, wiping out uh, uh, 
military bases in the U.S. mainland or even New York City and places like that uh, in Washington. Um, so really, as long as the United States exists with nuclear weapons, North Korea is going to feel a security threat. Mm -hmm. So what is this future that Tillerson is talking about, the future that will give them the security they seek? There is no such thing. Because what they're seeking is something that we cannot give them. They want a world where North Korea is not under any kind, you know, with all their, um, you know, with all their human rights violations and with all their, um, already they started one war in 1950, uh, and they, so, whatever, as long as there are people who disagree with them, who, who, uh, um, who who want them to change, they will see that as a security threat, um, and they will, they will not have the security that they seek. So what kind of a future is Tillerson talking about? I'm not sure. I don't know at all, actually, what, what that he's talking about here. I don't think that's, I think that's an impossible dream. <clears throat> all right. Do um, you have anything to say no, before we go to break? No, we're in a quandary. We mm -hmm. don't really, uh, there is no uh, peaceful solution when dealing with a, uh, a country like North Korea. It seems like China is uh, strangely silent on mm -hmm. the whole issue. Uh, they do have the ability to uh, deal with this problem, mm -hmm. but they seem to be sitting on the sidelines. Uh, at least I haven't heard of anything, to, any strong mm -hmm. uh, peace proposal that they've put forth. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they this plays to China's um, favor, this uh, heightening of tensions between the United States and uh, North Korea. What well, China's peace proposal is that the United States and South Korea stop having military uh, exercises, stop mm -hmm. training for uh, a defensive war against North Korea. Uh, that's, their, that's their peace proposal. Anyway, let's take a break now, and we'll come back, and uh, I think we'll talk a little bit more about this when we come back. Research and auto ordinance. The Car Firearms Group. With a diverse product line that blends American craftsmanship with cutting edge technology, it's no secret why gun enthusiasts choose Car Firearms Group. From the Desert Eagle and Baby Desert Eagle made famous by Hollywood, the history of the 1911 and the Tommy gun, to the best in compact concealed carry. Car Firearms Group is not only the first name in personal defense, it's a name that has earned the respect of gun enthusiasts around the world. Concealment, innovative technology, value, accuracy, and history. Car Firearms Group, made in the USA. Visit car.com today. Welcome back to the King's Report for Wednesday, August 9th, 2017. I'm here with Greg Knoll, and we're going through the news from a technical perspective. And, uh, well, let's talk a little bit more about North Korea. Let me read one more article here. This is from a Bloomberg Politics. Uh, President Donald Trump's threat to hit North Korea with fire and fury jolted markets from New York to Seoul, even as the U.S. lawmakers questioned the president's willingness to back up the heated uh, rhetoric. That's never a good idea, you know, to say that uh, Trump is not going to back up his uh, words with actions. <laughs> Uh, hasn't been hasn't proven very uh, accurate in the past. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States, Trump told uh, reporters at in Bedminster, New Jersey, on Tuesday. They will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power the likes of which this world has never seen before. Uh, Trump's remarks came as North Korea, reacting to new United States United Nations sanctions against its nuclear weapons program, warned the United States would pay dearly and said it was examining plans to fire a missile toward an American military base in Guam. 
The exchange followed a Washington Post report citing a defense intelligence agency analysis that Pyongyang successfully developed a nuclear warhead to use on its missiles. Uh, he uh, has been very threatening beyond a normal statement, uh, Trump said of Kim. While global powers and financial markets have long been accustomed to over-the-top rhetoric from North Korea, the U.S. has traditionally taken a more diplomatic stance. Trump's suggestion he might meet Kim's threats with action startled markets and prompted a renewed focus on the narrowing list of military and economic options available. Um, the S&P index fell to a session lows Tuesday, and the CBOE volatility index jumped 11% after uh, Trump spoke. The comments jolted markets from a summer slumber, with U.S. assets largely little changed for most of the session. South Korea's benchmark Kospi fell 1.1% fell uh, to its lowest since June 21, while the won fell the most in three weeks. Japan's Topics Index uh, had the biggest slide in almost three months. Uh, so that is uh, uh, what happened there. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the article mentions that the uh, Washington Post reported that um, uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency now believes that uh, uh, North Korea has succeeded in miniaturizing a nuclear warhead to the point where it will actually fit on a, um, uh, on, on, a, on a missile. And that, of course, was always the until now has been the question, can they do that? Because nuclear warheads, uh, actually, um, you know, I think even a high school student, can, if they have the materials, can create a nuclear bomb. But the, but the hard part, and where people get paid big bucks to do, is to miniaturize that thing mm -hmm. so that instead of being the size of a bus or a refrigerator, it's actually the size uh, that will actually fit into the, that little cone mm -hmm. at the top of a missile. And the defense, according to the Washington Post, the Defense Intelligence Agency says that uh, North Korea has uh, succeeded in doing this. Um, uh, now, there's still some doubt. For example, uh, the most recent, uh, what was that, July 28th, that they uh, shot their, tested their most recent ICBM. And um, uh, NHK in Japan, the television station in Japan, uh, ran some video of it falling down, coming down in flames. And, um, but some people looking at that point out that the camera that caught that was looking west across a mountain range. So it was on the, uh, it was actually on the Pacific coast and it was looking west across a uh, narrow peninsula in a mountain range. And this uh, reentry vehicle uh, that we assume is the reentry vehicle of the North Korean missile was falling down into the uh, ocean uh, west of Japan, about 100 miles west of Japan. And you see it coming down in a flame. And the thing is, though, that the flame goes out before the reentry vehicle reaches that, reaches the point where it would be hidden behind the mountain range. Mm. And so people look at that and say, it looks like maybe that reentry vehicle burned up before it actually came all the way down to Earth. And so maybe North Koreans have not yet completely solved that problem of developing a reentry vehicle that can uh, come back into the atmosphere without burning up. Mm -hmm. um, that may be wishful thinking, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that may be an issue that they're still working on, maybe they've already solved it, uh, we're really not. And what would sure. happen to a, a, a nuclear um, bomb if it did go off coming down? It would well, still create quite a bit of havoc, I'm sure. Yeah, it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know um, what would happen in that if a if the reentry vehicle were to burn up, what would happen to the nuclear weapon yeah. that is inside that? Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, I think you know you, uh, there is a detonation process. I think you have a smaller explosion, and that smaller explosion causes the the whole thing to explode. I think that's the way it works, as I understand. And it creates in, it needs impact. I I believe. No, I don't think so. No, no, no. Actually, the nuclear bomb does not go off on impact. It goes off at a certain altitude. Oh, okay. Yeah, because then we, you're able to spread the, oh, okay. um, the, the blast uh, mm. over a wider area. Mm. Uh, so uh, it doesn't require that impact. But it does, I think, it, I think the way it works is that there's a, there's a uh, smaller explosion, and then that smaller explosion Creates detonates bigger, the larger explosion. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I believe I remember that. Um, 
So anyway, we don't really know how far along North Korea is, is, is on their um, quest for a nuclear weapon that can actually um, hit the United States and explode and do damage in the United States. But one thing you do know is that they are progressing more quickly than anyone thought. And if they do launch a, a missile toward Guam or anywhere in mm -hmm. the United States territory, <clears throat> Trump will more than likely uh, retaliate. Yes. You know, NORAD, um, this is what they do. They, they watch for missile attacks against the United States, and they're not going to wait to see what happens before right. they retaliate. That's right. Yeah. So uh, this could all happen very quickly. Yes. Uh, but, you know, the Russian statement uh, that we read a while ago is interesting to me because the Russians actually have people on the ground because the, one of the reasons that North Korea is making so much progress is that they have hired former Soviet mm -hmm. scientists and engineers. Right who, you know, uh, didn't have any income, and so they are, are working with the North Koreans now. Mm -hmm. uh, and North Korea, of course, is raising cash in many ways, part of it by stealing money out of <laughs> state banks, uh, Bangladesh and other places. They, they hack these places and steal money. Um, uh, and uh, so the Russians actually have people in, in these laboratories who are actually working with the North Koreans. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if the... One of the reasons that the Russians are more complacent about this than about this than the rest of us is that they know more about what's going on than the rest of us do. <laughs> Maybe they know exactly where the North Koreans are. Um, yeah, now uh, you're, you're looking at that uh, North Korean reentry re vehicle coming down, mm. uh, and um, you see the um, the the map on the bottom right there shows the location of the camera that took that um, footage. And you can see that it's on the Pacific coast, and it was taking footage of a reentry vehicle that was falling into the uh, ocean uh, that is to the west of Japan. And so they were looking at it across a mountain range. Uh, anyway, and so as I was saying, the Russians uh, seem to be very complacent. Um, and I don't know, maybe they have other reasons. Uh, maybe they, they're just uh, saying, oh, let's all cool it because they don't want a war. And maybe that's the reason. Well, there it is a trade, trading partner with, with Russia. Uh, North Korea, uh, yeah. 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 When I was in Russia, uh, I I was astounded at the number of North Koreans in Russia. Mm -hmm. So there's a very uh, cozy relationship between yes. uh, between the two countries. For a long time, uh, North Korea was exporting laborers uh, to uh, Russia, especially mm -hmm. to Siberia, to work in the uh, to work in the lumber uh, industry there, mm -hmm. uh, and they were basically used as slave labor. Uh, to uh, raise uh, cash for foreign um, uh, currency for uh, North Korea. Mm -hmm. And, of course, North Korea is now doing that in other nations as well. Uh, I think on YouTube there was a, um, uh, a program, maybe by BBC or one of those stations, networks uh, about uh, North Koreans working in Poland mm. um, uh, fairly right. recently yeah, in, mm. in, in construction you wow. know, and how they were always isolated and they couldn't uh, have give and take with uh, uh, people outside of their own small community and things mm -hmm. like this, and how the uh, salaries uh, were not actually given to the people directly, but you know, so North Korea is taking a big chunk and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. And this is, how, this is one way that North Korea raises uh, cash and by exporting basically slave labor mm -hmm. uh, to various countries. And one of the uh, sanctions that was imposed, that the United Nations imposed this time, was to tell countries, stop doing that, or at least don't increase it, I think was, I think they said, <laughs> don't hire any more slaves than you already have. <laughs> um, that is a controversial practice that uh, mm. North Korea does as a part of its uh, effort to gain foreign currency, which they use to pay their Russian um, scientists and engineers uh, who uh, helped them uh, build these uh, uh, nuclear uh, missiles. Um, um, coincidentally, uh, today, uh, 9th of uh, August, of course, is the anniversary of the day that uh, the United States uh, uh, bombed uh, Nagasaki with it. With a, with a, actually, that was a hydrogen bomb back then. Um, the second one that was um, used uh, to end the world, uh, Second World War in 1945. Um, and so we are now at a point where, what is it, 67 years later, it, it looks uh, possible that uh, uh, we will have um, another, or 72 years later. Well, I'm, I'm too early in the morning for me. My mathematical <laughs> brain is just completely out. So, yeah, 72 years later now, isn't it? Well, it just seems like uh, you know, with the with the failure of the Han mother, that 
uh, judgment is coming and uh, maybe this is the inevitable fate that the world has to go through. Um, you know, it's as, as sad as that may be, that might be uh, the, the course humanity has to go through now in the period of judgment. So what do we do? I think the first thing we do is we make ourselves right with God and we, and we make ourselves right with, uh, with Christ and Messiah and our, our true Father. Because no matter what happens, and you know, not all of us, uh, if this is a, um, a kind of serious judgment that uh, Greg is talking about and what uh, Second King has talked about, what Father also uh, predicted in the case that the province goes the wrong way, if it is that kind of serious judgment, then not all of us will uh, uh, be able to survive. But even if we uh, don't survive on this earth, as long as we are right with God and, and right with true parents, then we will have nothing to worry about. Uh, so that's the most important thing uh, for us to do. And to follow God's uh, and true Father's um, guidance to put ourselves in a, um, safe places because there will be safe places not only uh, here in Pennsylvania uh, but also around the world. Uh, the second king has uh, stated that. And uh, so we don't necessarily all have to crowd here into these areas. Uh, uh, um, but wherever you are, God will guide you uh, to a place that is, uh, uh, that is safe uh, and safe. Um, so that we can survive and that we can build the uh, second, that we can build the uh, Chanyu group uh, centric on the second king uh, after this uh, judgment period has passed. So uh, what the second king is pr predicting is a short but uh, perhaps a severe uh, judgment period. And um, it looks like we're in about coming up on mid-trib uh, uh, fairly soon. And uh, unfortunately, that's not the um, worst of it. It will continue to get bad. And, and we don't know what is coming. It could be nuclear <clears throat> war, it could be disease, it could be famine, uh, it could be flood, it could be natural disasters. Uh, there are all sorts of ways uh, in which a judgment could occur. But whatever happens, uh, let's have a confidence in our relationship with God. And that is the most important thing. I think if we take the cues from the second king, uh, focus on uh, self-defense, yes. training, mm -hmm. uh, building a strong physical body, mm -hmm. spiritual body, uh, like you said, get right with God through prayer and repentance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, but also take uh, take the cues from the second king because God is working through Father's uh, chosen inheritor yes. Yes. and get strong on self-defense, firearms, uh, you know, physical training. These are all things that will build a strong yes. immune system. And uh, get your family uh, along the same line. And then uh, any hardships that come will be more equipped to be able to deal with. And it. stay tuned to the King's Report. Yes. <laughs> and we'll be back after this. Magnum Research and Auto Ordnance, the Car Firearms Group, with a diverse product line that blends American craftsmanship with cutting edge technology. It's no secret why gun enthusiasts choose Car Firearms Group. From the Desert Eagle and Baby Desert Eagle made famous by Hollywood, the history of the 1911 and the Tommy gun, to the best and compact concealed carry. Car Firearms Group is not only the first name in personal defense, it's a name that has earned the respect of gun enthusiasts around the world. Concealment, innovative technology, value, accuracy, and history. Car Firearms Group, made in the USA. Visit car.com today. Welcome back to the King's Report uh, for Wednesday, August 9th, uh, 2017, eighth year of Chengi, sixth month and 18th day by the heavenly calendar. Let's go through some of the other headlines. Uh, driver mows down soldiers in Paris, a deliberate attack. 
Uh, yeah, so six soldiers in uh, Paris were mowed down by a driver that was driving a BMW. The ter terrorists are coming up in the world. They're using more and more expensive cars. Uh, they'll be using Rolls Royces before you know it. Anyway, the police are looking for that car, and they're calling it a deliberate attack. Um, well, Europe, there we go again in Europe. Lawyer president sends uh, private messages to Mueller, the special counsel. So it turns out that the President Trump and the, uh, the special counsel have been uh, talking to each other. Um, special counsel's finances go public. Wall Street Journal calls out Bannon for White House dysfunction. Republicans playing defense um, in August recess. McConnell vents about uh, excessive expectations. Um, Fake Starbucks ad trying to lure dreamers, round them up for deportation. Okay, don't know what that's about. But Zuckerberg, wealth booms in Trump era, made more than anyone. Let's see what that's about. This is on uh, time.com. Future president. Uh, maybe so. And he's not old enough to be president yet. Uh, he's 33, but he will be old enough uh, uh, by the time the next election comes along. And if he is elected, he will be uh, the youngest uh, ever uh, in that position. Amazon CEO uh, J Jeff Bezos was briefly the richest man in the world uh, late last month. Uh, due to a surge in Amazon stock prices, Bezos' net worth rose to over $90 billion and surpassed that of Bill Gates. But then Amazon shares retreated, dropping Bezos back into second place. Oh, the <laughs> woes of the rich. Even so, through the first half of 2017, dollars. no one made more money than no one, no one made more money than Bezos, who saw his net worth increase by $21 billion. But now Bezos is in second place in that elite competition as well. As of this week, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has made more money than Bezos in 2017. According to the Bloomberg data, Zuckerberg has earned $23.1 billion year to date through Monday. That's year to date. <laughs> Six months, pretty much. Seven months. Yeah. You're to date, 23. Wow. How many billion have you made, Mr. <laughs> Small Business Man? <laughs> I'm working on my first B. Here's your working on your first B. <laughs> I'm still working on my first M. <laughs> Putting his overall wealth at $73.1 billion. The net, net worth of Bezos, on the other hand, is now up $19.7 billion thus far in 27, 2017 for an estimated total of $85.85 billion. Uh, in the past month, Zuckerberg's wealth has shot up 16% as Facebook shares have soared on strong earnings reports. <clears throat> but, you know, <clears throat> he does this by, by, um, by, um, by getting cozy with China <clears throat> and by getting cozy with uh, other big governments. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an example of how Big business and, and big and big and government. Big government to, loves to Facebook because they can really track yes. the behavior of yes. every citizen. And big business also, they yeah. can track the behavior of their consumers. Mm -hmm. All right. On Monday alone, Zuckerberg gained nearly one billion dollars. What did you do Monday? <laughs> <laughs> On Monday alone, Zuckerberg gained nearly one billion dollars. <laughs> Let's read that again. On Monday alone, Zuckerberg gained <laughs> nearly $1 billion. Uh, Amazing. He is now just $3 billion away from surpassing Warren Buffett as the fourth richest person in the world. So what has Zuckerberg been doing with all those earnings? Political reported last week that uh, he had hired a former Clinton pollster ostensibly to advise his foundation Zuckerberg and his wife plan to give away 99% of their shares, but also a move that some think is a sign he has ambitions in politics. Earlier this year, Zuckerberg hired former Obama advisor David Great. Fluff. Former Obama, Obama advisor. advisor. <laughs> Zuckerberg has been on a tour of every U.S. state, which has included visits to a Ford assembly plant outside Detroit and a trip to D D Dayton, Ohio, a key swing region for elections. Zuckerberg has twice denied that he's running for office. As, of Be as for Bezos, he previously had the title of 2017's biggest earner, but in late July, Amazon shares fell on a weaker-than-expected earnings report. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg, there's another key swing region that you need to be aware of, and that's northeast Pennsylvania. Um, if you come here, we can give you some good education on... Um, <laughs> uh, on how to really act like a, 
a, a, um, a, a person of God. Um, and maybe you can help to uh, build a, a Chanuguk. Uh, you can donate 10% of your... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can donate 10%. That would we'll be awesome. We'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the king could use that money well. Uh, well, that would be a good start, yes. That would be a good start. Yes. All right. Um, so that uh, is about Zuckerberg making more money than anyone. I heard uh, Warren Buffett uh, put away a hundred, hundred uh, was it, billion in cash recently. Oh, he's hoarding. He's hoarding, he's, hoarding yeah. Yeah, that was a, a headline yesterday. Okay. He's hoarding. And I have a question about that. <laughs> <laughs> because hoarding cash is something you do when you're stuffing it into your mattress, right? Right. If it's in the bank, it's being lent out to people. So how is that hoarding? It's just you that you're not have it in a safe deposit box or something. A hundred billion? <laughs> I mean, how how big of a box would you have to have for a hundred billion dollars? If it's it probably was in, got big boxes. If it's in, if it's in a hundred dollar bills. Right. Now I think I think that the headline is a uh, <laughs> hoarding. I think is not the correct word. Yeah. So even if it's in uh, uh, variable no, but bonds, I think, I think the idea is that it's out of the banks. Otherwise, it wouldn't be hoarding. I know that's why I say it's yeah. hoarding is not the right word. Is what I'm saying. Well, it means that he has a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. On his, on his, on his balance bank. sheet. Yeah. Yeah. You know? mm. But having hundred billion dollars on your balance sheet is not hoarding. I don't think. We'll have to read the article. Yeah, we have to read. Anyway, that headline is gone. It's yesterday's story. Um, Venezuela's new assembly declares itself all powerful. What a surprise. What a surprise, yes. Uh, so, Venezuela again uh, showing us uh, the uh, inevitable uh, path of uh, socialism uh, turning into a complete uh, dictatorship. Uh, last Sunday, they elected a new. Um, Constituent Assembly, they said, because the National Assembly, the, the parliament that existed, wasn't doing what the, what the president wanted. So, simple solution, create a new one. <laughs> <laughs> a separate one. And have that one be all-powerful. Uh, this is an AP story uh, out of Caracas. The new Constitutional Assembly assumed even more power in Venezuela by declaring itself as the superior body to all other governmental institutions, including the opposition-controlled Congress. That decree came Tuesday, just hours after the assembly d delegates took control of a legislative chamber and put up pictures of the late President Hugo Chavez, who installed Venezuela's uh, socialist system. Uh, Delcy Rodriguez, the head of the ruling Socialist Party and leader of the body, said the unanimously approved decree prohibits lawmakers in Congress from taking any action that would, be, that would interfere with laws passed by the newly installed Constitutional Assembly. Uh, we are not threatening anyone said uh, Artist, Artisto Bulo Esturiz, uh, the Constitutional Assembly's first vice president. We are looking for ways to coexist. Yeah, you, you do whatever I tell you to and we can coexist. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> Leaders of Congress, which previously voted not to recognize any of the new super bodies decrees, said lawmakers would try to meet in the gold-domed legislative palace Wednesday, but there were questions whether security officers guarding the building would let them end. I got news for you guys. The locks have been changed. <laughs> the opposition to President Nicolas Maduro also faced another fight Wednesday before the government stacked Supreme Court, which scheduled a hearing on charges against a Caracas area opposition mayor. The judges convicted another mayor Tuesday for failing to move against protesters during four months of political unrest. In calling the July 30th election for the Constitutional Assembly, Maduro said a new constitution would help resolve the nation's political standoff, but opposition leaders view it as a view it as a power grab, and the president's allies have said they will go uh, after his opponents. Um, before its decree declaring itself all powerful, the assembly ousted Venezuela's outspoken chief prosecutor, established a truth commission expected to target Maduro's foes, and pledged support and solidarity with the unpopular president. The latest surge of protests began in early April in reaction to a quickly, quickly rescinded attempt by the government supporting Supreme Court to strip the National Assembly of its powers. But the unrest ballooned into a widespread movement fed by anger over Venezuela's triple-digit inflation, shortage of, of food and medicine, and high crime. Uh, there's another article here that uh, uh, in Venezuela, few can afford ice cream that costs one-tenth of one penny. Wow. 
Uh, that's uh, how much the country's uh, um, uh, currency has uh, been devalued. Venezuela um, residents talk of exodus from this cash-starved Venezuelan port. <clears throat> August 8th, yeah, so there was a similar story some time back. Uh, even, in this, even in his worst nightmares, Armando Rojas, a longtime business owner in the beach town of Puerto Cabello, never expected to see such scenes of economic struggle in Venezuela against the backdrop of both political and economic turmoil that has worsened in recent months, the former uh, playing out mostly in Caracas, Rojas has seen how hard times are affecting people in the once busting seaport, bustling seaport about 200 kilometers west of the capital. Uh, I never imagined it could ever get to this point, says the businessman, now in his early 60s and with 15 years of success in his line of work. It's a disaster what we've done to our country. Remember, Venezuela has the largest oil reserves deposit. Mm -hmm. The amount of oil that they have in the ground mm -hmm. is greater than Saudi Arabia. Mm. It's the largest in the world. And yet, its people are starving. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with this picture? Um, and these people say, I never, I never could have imagined that it could get to this point. Never could have imagined that his country could get to this point. Things that we can't imagine, that a lot of things are happening that we never could have imagined, you know, mm -hmm. even in our faith community. Um, even in, you know, talking about the Korean Peninsula or talking about, um, a lot of things are happening that uh, people just cannot imagine and say, oh, no, that can never happen. But, it, but it's happening, and more will happen because we're in the last days. His words are echoed by others who warn that the once pro prosperous country is teetering on the edge of an economic freefall and worsening social upheaval. Those voices are primarily political opponents of President Nicolas Maduro. Da, 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 da. Where's the ice cream story? Um, there's something about here about ice cream. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to find out why people can't afford ice cream. Uh, at 300 boulevards, the ice cream costs the equivalent of about 0 0.001 cents. Wait, Drudge uh, headline was 0 0.001 dollars. But in the ice cream article, it says cents. So this is not 0 0.1 cents. This is 0 0.001 cents at the current black market exchange rate. But after the currency went into a free fall, this month, the minimum Venezuelan wage is now at just $4.75 U.S. per month by the um, black market exchange rate. $4.75 a month. Less than $5 a month. For, um, that's the, av the minimum uh, wage. Hmm. Month, not per hour, per month. Asking anyone to spend... Any portion of that on anything non-essential like ice cream now seems like hoping for a miracle. Uh, and that's why one local who works at the town's port is eager to, eager to get their children out of Puerto Cabello and out of Venezuela. Yeah, I was going to say there's probably a mass exodus uh, to surrounding countries. Uh, anything to escape that kind of hellhole. Yeah, but I think surrounding companies, uh, countries are probably not all that welcoming um, this doesn't really cover that aspect of it, but uh, I, I, you know, I think Colombia at one time opened its borders so that uh, people can come across the border to do some shopping. Uh, but you know, we, what we think of economic migrants these days, yeah. people don't want them, and so the people of Venezuela. Eventually, you know, people have to take uh, ownership over their own countries mm -hmm. and take responsibility for their own countries, and. And the people of Venezuela, after all, bear more than a little responsibility uh, for um, how this, uh, what, what was happening now. Uh, Hugo Chavez uh, promised uh, all sorts of things to people, and, and people believed him and uh, voted for him. And um, uh, now look where they are. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in the United States as well, you know, we really dodged a bullet uh, when um, we defeated uh, Hillary Clinton last year. Uh, but right now, Many, many forces are trying to remove Trump from office and to put in a Hillary-like uh, person uh, into office. 
and, and um, uh, we really need to guard against that because uh, who we choose as our leaders really um, de determines uh, our future to a greater extent. To a great extent, so we have to be careful of that. Uh, if people uh, choose to follow the Han mother, they will go to us go a certain direction. If they choose to uh, follow the second king, they will go another direction. And um, uh, whether it's a countries or or religious uh, uh, faiths, uh, uh, we need to be very careful about um, uh, who we are recognizing uh, as our as our leaders. Okay. All right, let's uh, take a break and come back uh, in a minute. <clears throat> Magnum Research and Auto Ordnance. The Car Firearms Group. With a diverse product line that blends American craftsmanship with cutting edge technology, it's no secret why gun enthusiasts choose Car Firearms Group. From the Desert Eagle and Baby Desert Eagle made famous by Hollywood, the history of the 1911 and the Tommy Gun, to the best in compact concealed carry. Car Firearms Group is not only the first name in personal defense, it's a name that has earned the respect of gun enthusiasts around the world. Concealment, innovative technology, value, accuracy, and history. Car Firearms Group, made in the USA. Visit car.com today. Welcome back to the King's Report uh, for August, 8th, August 9th, 2017. It's the ninth day of August now. And um, I'm, I'm seeing a breaking news on USA Today on Stop in Guam. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says he doesn't believe there is any imminent threat from North Korea. Well, it's nice of him to visit uh, Guam and to reassure the people of Guam. Uh, but remember that um, um, things are moving much faster than we expected. Uh, so if he says that there is no imminent threat from North Korea, why don't you invite him to stay a little longer? <laughs> so, um, but also uh, on um, USA Today, uh, there's an article, Trump White House weighs unprecedented plan to privatize much of the war in Afghanistan. This wasn't what we were thinking about when we talked about privatizing a lot of government functions. <laughs> But when a war goes on for 16 years, remember Vietnamization? Mm -hmm. You know, eventually the government says, you know, I've had enough of this. Yeah, I want to get out of this. Exhaustion that goes So on. let's just turn it over to the Vietnamese. Or now here, it's different. It's not Afghanization, it's privatization. Mercenaries. Uh, yes, listen to this. The White House is actively considering a bold plan to turn over a big chunk of the U.S. war in Afghanistan to private contractors in an effort to turn the tide in a stalemated war, according to the former head of a security firm pushing the project. Under the proposal, 5,500 private contractors, primarily former special operations troops, would advise Afghan combat forces. The plan also includes a 90-plane private air force that would provide air support in the nearly 16-year-old war against Taliban insurgents. Eric Prince, founder of the Blackwater Security Forum, firm, told uh, USA Today. The unprecedented proposal comes as U.S.-backed Afghan military faces a stalemate in the war and growing frustration by President Trump about the lack of progress in the war. The U.S. military has 8,400 U.S. Uh, troops there uh, to train and guide uh, local forces. They do not have a direct combat role and presumably would be replaced gradually by the contractors. The plan remains under serious consideration within the White House, despite misgivings by Trump's national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, 
and Army uh, three-star general and Defense uh, Secretary Jim Mattis. Other White House officials, such as Chief Strategist Stephen Bannon, appear open to using private contractors. At what point do you say a conventional military approach in Afghanistan is not working, said Prince, a former Navy SEAL. Maybe we say that at 16 years. Blackwater, founded in 1997, worked extensively in the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Prince sold the company in 2010. The White House did not respond to requests for comment, and it goes on. So we're going to have private armies now, private air forces now, and I guess private navies will soon follow. <coughs> a private aircraft carrier someday? Paid for by you and me. Taxpayer yeah. dollars will fund these operations. Oh, but he says it will cost less than $10 billion a year. <laughs> what a deal. Signific significantly lower than the more than $40 billion the Pentagon has budgeted this year. It's, it's really one of these uh, insane scenarios where you're – we're spending $40 billion in Afghan on a war that does anybody understand anything, what we're doing there? Yeah. In, in the meantime, we're— I understand. Here it is. <laughs> Let me lay it out for you. A bunch of Saudi Arabians attacked right. New York, mm -hmm. the government tells us, and so we attacked Afghanistan. Right. Makes perfect sense. Right. Don't you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have this love relationship with Saudi Arabia. And, and we're not only attacking Afghanistan— We've killed bin Laden, by the way, mm -hmm. who, we, who we blame for that attack. And we, we attacked, the reason for attacking Afghanistan in the beginning was because bin Laden was there. Uh, and uh, he planned the whole thing, so we wanted to kill him. And so we did that. And we're still there fighting, and we're now there for 16 years. It's the longest war in U.S. history. So, you know, back in, back in the days, all right, <laughs> college kids would have, would have been protesting. Protesting. Yes. Where, where's the outrage? Where, where are the protests? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Uh, there were, what, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids uh, marching in Washington in the early 70s protesting the Vietnam War. And basically the Vietnam War was lost in Washington, not uh, uh, in Vietnam. Um, so where is the outrage? Um, where, where are people demonstrating against uh, U.S. involvement. Where, where are these, uh, these uh, snowflakes, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking? Uh, what would happen if we pulled out? What's your best guess of Afghanistan? Probably chaos. Yeah. Lo Probably lo chaos. Local, local chaos. Yeah, local and chaos. The local yeah. Afghans would have to yeah. decide their fate. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, after the Soviet Union went into Afghanistan and got burned, all right. Mm -hmm. They went into Afghanistan and fought right. a very long war, mm -hmm. uh, and they got burned, and so they got left. They left. And now the United States went into Afghanistan, and we're getting burned 16 years now. I think Afghanistan is pretty safe from foreign invasion. I think no one in his right, right, right mind is going to invade Afghanistan now. Because right. whoever invades that country uh, is not going to be able to control it. But they grow something there, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> It's a cash crop. It's a cash crop. They grow poppies there. Uh, and um, uh, what was it? Uh, someone in, in the U.S. government was saying, maybe we should look into this. <laughs> the connection between the Afghan uh, copy, poppy crop uh, and uh, a U.S. Uh, heroin addiction. Maybe we should look into that. Another way our tax dollars are being spent. <laughs> um, so is that the reason that we... Uh, that would be a reason for staying in Afghanistan, wouldn't it? That would be a reason. Somebody's uh, trying to control that uh, uh, poppy uh, crop, the heroin uh, trade. That would make sense. That would make sense. Because otherwise, why are we in Afghanistan? The Taliban, okay. The Taliban. Um, which originates in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, okay. Yes, which originates in Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah. Why are we in Afghanistan? Uh, There's huge financial reasons to, that benefit a lot of people to have this war machine operating in Iraq, mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, the Iran effort. Mm -hmm. There's huge financial interest. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. It's 8 o'clock, and uh, we we'll leave you with that question. Why are we in Afghanistan? Uh, and shouldn't we just get out? I privatize. I don't think even privatize it. Ten billion, even ten billion dollars uh, a year is it too expensive? 
um, you know. We have to reduce government. We have a $20 trillion debt. <laughs> we, have to, we have to get a handle on this. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will end up, the bubble will burst. Yes. Well, it's going to burst anyway. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a foregone judgment, yeah, I think. Uh, nothing we can do about that. It's, it's going to burst. It's like seeing one of those uh, soap bubbles floating <laughs> up into the sky. You know it's going to burst. <laughs> when? Boom! When? 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 <laughs> At some point, yeah, it's going to burst. There's no way of stopping that. Uh, but um, so what we have to do, what you and I have to do, is be right with God, be right with True Father. And um, uh, so that way uh, we can survive the burst and pick up the pieces and build Tonyugu after the burst, after the judgment has passed. Uh, so let's do that. So God bless, God speed, and may his kingdom come. Thank you. I'm so fast to find you there.